Hi, Metacosis Perfectionalis is back and today we're gonna talk about Bud Chiari syndrome. So let's jump in. First, a quick review about the liver anatomy. Here's the liver, left lobe, right lobe, gallbladder. The vein that enters the liver is called the portal vein. The veins that exit the liver are called hepatic veins one two three all of them will connect to the inferior vena cava and go to the right atrium of the heart okay so the blood goes from the portal vein into the liver then goes to what we call the portal triad so this vein is a branch from the portal vein and this is a branch from the hepatic artery called hepatic arteriole this will be the hepatic venial and this is a bile duct the arterial supply will move like this way the vein venous supply move in the same direction like this and these small venous ducts are called hepatic sinusoids they collect together into this part we call this the central vein central vein go to the intralobular vein and then we'll go up to the hepatic veins and from the hepatic veins to the inferior vena cava okay so but Chiari syndrome What's the abnormality here? Okay, but Chiari syndrome, the problem that we have a clot or a, a thrombus here and the hepatic veins. Okay, so what will happen? That's what we will discuss. But first, let's get the broad picture. So here we have the post hepatic means after the liver okay obstruction of the blood flow okay so here is called post hepatic and here is pre hepatic and here is intra hepatic so post hepatic after the liver is here they will have two subtypes hepatic vein thrombosis but Chiari syndrome which we are talking about now and another subject or another entity called veno-occlusive disease, which is a topic for another video. But Chiari syndrome has two main causes, primary or secondary. Primary is thrombosis inside the vein, the hepatic veins. Secondary is due to compression from outside of the vein. So if here is the hepatic vein coming up the liver, if we obstruct it like this thrombosis from inside that's primary however if a tumor comes and sits upon here compressing the hepatic veins that's secondary so as we said but Chiari syndrome is a post hepatic obstruction of blood flow due to thrombosis of the hepatic veins thrombosis means virtuos triad Virchow's triad. What's Virchow's triad? Like a, a scientist or a physician described three main factors, risk factors that lead to thrombosis. Um, number one is endothelial damage. Endothelium is the layer that lines the blood vessel from the inside. Number two is blood stasis. And number three is hypercoagulability. Okay. All of these factors has one outcome, more thromboses. Okay. So the causes are primary as polycythemia vera. And this is the most common cause of butt Chiari syndrome. Why? Due to hyperviscosity. Hyperviscosity. Okay. And this will lead to blood stasis, hypercoagulability and eventually thrombosis, according to Virchow's triad. Also, oral contraceptive pills. Why? Because they affect the 
hypercoagulability portion of Virchow's triad. Oral contraceptive pills, especially if they have estrogen, will increase the probability of thrombosis. Pregnancy, the same thing. Pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria has increased risk of thrombosis. Why? Nobody knows. Lupus anticoagulant, the name is wrong. It's not anticoagulant, it's actually procoagulant. So it's a misnomer. We all know it as lupus anticoagulant, but what happens actually is procoagulation, increased risk of thrombosis. And liver cancer, of course, cancer have increased risk of thrombosis. Uh, secondary, like compression by a tumor from outside due to any type of cancer, maybe also liver cancer can lead this. So liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma can lead to primary or secondary but Chiari syndrome. So let's get to the pathophysiology of but Chiari syndrome. Okay, first we start with thrombosis in the hepatic veins okay there is a rule whenever there is obstruction in medicine whatever is behind it will back up will increase in pressure so we said that the venous blood is coming this way this way this way this way this way so when we block here okay pressure will build up here and then the pressure will go like this, 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 and this. Okay, so we will have three outcomes. Number one here inside the liver, number two portal vein territory, and number three an association, which is another disease. Okay, so number one inside the liver, what will happen? Let's zoom in. So, these, si these um, central veins and the sinusoids all will increase in size due to increase in pressure. They will back up into this portal venule and down to the portal vein. But when we are inside the liver, this increase in pressure will put pressure here in the hexagonal liver and will lead to necrosis inside the center of the lobule called centrilobular necrosis. Okay, so in the center we have necrosis. What about the periphery? Here in the periphery, due to the increased pressure, will go from the center to the periphery, from the center to the periphery, and it will compress. This compression will lead to ischemia, and this ischemia will lead to peripheral fatty change. So in the center we have necrosis, in the periphery we have fatty change. When the disease advances, we will end up in nutmeg liver. Okay, the liver will look like a nutmeg. What about the entity number two? The portal vein territory. Okay, the portal vein, as we know, is the union of the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. So, we will get splenomegaly. The spleen will become huge due to the congestion. The pressure is coming in this way. And here, we, since the congestion occurs, Blood will go outside extravasation into the interstitial space and will lead to edema, edema in the peritoneal cavities, also known as ascites. So ascites and splenomegaly. What else? When the portal vein system shuts down, we have to get blood. How are we gonna get blood? Going through the IVC, through something that we call shunts portosystemic shunts which are found mainly mainly in three locations a around the esophagus leading to esophageal varices b around the umbilicus leading to the funny shape of the caput midose 
uh, medusa. And number C, around the anal canal leading to hemorrhoids. And these are painful. Okay, so these are the problems due to portal vein territory issues. What about number three? Number three is hepaturenal syndrome. When the liver is damaged, the kidney cries. Why? Due to hepaturenal syndrome, a completely different topic, and there is a video. The link will be in the description, or you can click here. So, let's recap what are the complications. In the liver, we have centrilobular necrosis and peripheral fatty change, eventually not make liver. What about the portal vein? We will have ascites, we will have splenomegaly, we will have photosystemic anastomosis leading to esophageal paresis, caput medosa, hemorrhoids, and eventually hepaturenal syndrome. That's it. What are the clinical findings? There is a triad of abdominal pain, okay, ascites, and enlarged painful liver because the capsule of the liver has nerve endings. So when the liver enlarges, it stretches the capsule leading to pain. Okay, how to diagnose it? First, clinical symptoms and signs, the triad. What else? Liver enzymes, AST, ALT. What else? PT, we said thromboses. What else? Creatinine, urea, electrolytes, LDH, all of the signs of that liver problems or kidney problems. What else? We can use ultrasound. Ultrasound with pulsed Doppler. It will show obliteration of the hepatic veins, thromboses or stenosis, spider web vessels, large collateral vessels, etc. What else? We can use angiography, also known as venography in this case, to go look inside of these hepatic veins. You can use CD or MRI, but they are not as sensitive. Liver biopsy, not necessary, but can differentiate but Chiari syndrome from other causes, such as um, Rice syndrome or whatever disease is there or like for example hepatocellular carcinoma biopsy may be necessary what's the treatment first let's try since there is thrombosis let's try number one anticoagulants okay what about number two since there is edema known as ascites let's try diet with salt restriction and let's try diuretics. Okay, then we have the surgical options. Okay, so the problem is that we have thrombosis here, okay? So to bypass all of this crazy thing, let's make a shunt between the inferior vena cava and the portal vein. Okay, there are two procedures. Number one is steps, okay, which is transjugular. We go from the neck and we make a stent from here and down to here. The other one is dips. Dips is direct. We go from the femoral vein down here and then until we go to the IVC and then from the IVC connected to the portal vein. In like the real anatomy, these are close together, not that far. What else? Let's try injecting some thrombolytics directly inside of this veins known as in situ thrombolysis okay of course last resort is liver transplant and it is successful how about the prognosis of this disease if it's treated uh, they can live if it's not treated it's very bad 75 percent mortality rate in the first year but Chiari syndrome is rare but prognosis is bad. Take care. That's the end of the video. Please subscribe. New videos are coming every week. Let me know down in the comment section what you would like to videos you would like to produce or you'd like to see and I will make it happen. Like me on Facebook. Stay tuned. Medicals Perfectionalis. Have a great day.